Okay, more cost problems. This is um, problem two, Sue Enterprises for chapter four. And she uses a normal job order costing system, which means that we're not going to use actual costs in um, overhead, right? And a predetermined overhead rate based on machine hours. Estimated the overhead would be 720. And the production would use 90,000 machine hours. And then she gave us the following information. And so we got two separate jobs here. When I see this, I decide... Um, and then just glance over the questions a little bit. And I think what I would do is set up T accounts for this. One for each job. That's what I want. So, so put this on the side. You should have this printed. And the first thing we can do is figure out our, this is problem two. Sue Enterprises. I always want to put a Z in there. Maybe it needs a Z. Okay, our estimated overhead is 720,000. And the driver is machine hours. Um, so our machine hours are 90,000. So our overhead rate is $8 per machine hour. Okay. So let's make some T accounts here. Um, I'm going to start out with one for inventory. Um, I'll say raw material inventory. And then we've got job 125 and 126. So this would be whip 125 and whip 126. And then we'll also need uh, finished goods. Finished goods inventory. And I'm also going to have uh, um, an overhead, manufacturing overhead control account. Okay, so what do we know from this? We know that we know that we've got some, some, and this is for what month? We're looking at the month of August, right? So we've got work in process on August 1st, so that would be 10,000 for 125, 14,000 for 126. And the direct material cost that came out was uh, 15,000 and 20,000, so that would be come out of your raw material and 15,000 went into job 125 and 20,000 went into 126. Okay. Um, got direct labor costs of 24,000. Yeah. We should probably put a little direct material, direct labor, and then an overhead here. Direct labor for 126 is 31,000. Okay, direct material, direct labor. And then finally, we've got to put some overhead in here. And the overhead is um, $8 per machine hour. So I've got 1,500 times 8 and 2,200 machine hours times 8. So I cheated, you know, I actually looked at this before. So we're going to have 12,000 of overhead here for 125. And 17.6. Hope you guys check my math, okay? I usually make a lot of mistakes. All right. So our total, our total job cost here for 125 is 61,000, and for 126, 82.6. What else do they tell us? Okay, if direct material inventory had a beginning balance of 5,000, so that would be here. Direct material beginning balance of 5,000 and purchases of 50,000. What's the, the ending balance in direct material inventory? So our ending balance would be um, what you can do here. You can do this, this 35,000. These are pretty clean numbers though, and 55. 
So our ending balance would be 20,000. Okay. Um, so that's our, that's for question number one. I'll put the answers here. So I'm going to say uh, direct material inventory is 20,000. Um, if actual overhead in August was 35,000, okay, actual over actual would go here on the debit side, that's 35,000, and what was applied was 12,000 to 125, right, and 17,6, that's the overhead that was applied. So I've got a total of 35. And twenty nine six. Hmm. I've got fifty four hundred dollar difference here, and it is under applied. Okay. So for two, if it was under applied by fifty four hundred. Okay, next question is the cost of job 126, I think. Yeah, 126. The cost of job 126 is 826. Okay, and next is assume 125 and 126 were finished this period. What's the cost of goods manufactured? Now, we don't have a beginning finished goods inventory, but when these were done, 61,000 would come out and go into finished goods. And 82.6 would come out of work in process and go into finished goods. So finished goods would have a total of 93.6 here. So that would be our, um, for number four, uh, that's our cost of goods manufactured. What we made was worth 93600 in addition to finished goods inventory. Assume that job um, 125 was sold for 90000 So we've got a sale of, for 90000 This is 125, and a cost cost of goods sold would have been 61,000. So I've got 29,000 gross profit. Okay. So cost of goods sold for that period would have been 61,000. Okay. And finally, what's the gross profit on 125? The gross profit is 29,000. And we are all set.